So this is going to be the fourth uh, instruction uh, film shot in Synology's uh, Studio BEA5, also known as the Analog Studio or Voltage Controlled uh, Studio. And uh, today I'm going to present you the uh, technique of ring modulation or AC multiplication. So a ring modulator has two inputs, uh, X and Y, and one output. And for the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to connect two sine wave oscillators to the inputs of the ring modulator. Um, but before I'm going to do that, I'm going to give you a little bit of theory. So in the patch that we are going to use, I'm going to connect two sine wave generators to an AC multiplier. This is the X input and this is the Y input. And then there is one output. Now when these two inputs are sine waves, I can calculate the frequencies that will appear on the output as follows. Let's take an example where this one is 500 Hertz and this one is 100 Hertz. The signal at the output will consist of the sum of these two, so X plus Y and the absolute value of X minus Y. Why the absolute value? Uh, I will come back to that uh, later. So in this case, it is 500 plus 100 is 600, and 500 minus 100 is 400. So let's go to two sine wave oscillators and uh, see if this works. Now these oscillators here are very convenient for the demonstration that we are going to do. Uh, because as you can tell from the displays, uh, we can set exact frequencies. Now, for the rest, these devices can't do much. I mean, you cannot control them by external signals and so on. But uh, they're very nice if you want to set exact frequencies or frequency relationships between uh, different uh, devices. So let's dial in the two frequencies that I mentioned on the whiteboard. So this one is going to 500 hertz. And this one is going to 100 hertz. Before you start searching for the AC multiplier in the studio, I should uh, tell you something, which is there is no such device here. Yeah? So you would be searching for something that you cannot find. Uh, what we have here are devices with several functions, and one of those functions is the AC multiplication that we are going to use now. So we have a MUD AMM, actually we have eight of them, uh, and they have a switch, uh, and the switch says AMM, which is amplitude modulation, DC, which means DC multiplication, and AC, which is the AC multiplication. And this is what we are going to do now. The sine wave generators that I have just been uh, setting uh, are on the patch bay uh, here. So I'm going to take the first one, and I'm going to connect it to the X input of the multiplier. And I'm going to take the second one, and I'm go going to connect it to the second input of the multiplier. Something worth mentioning now is that in every patch that I'm demonstrating in this uh, situation, uh, so either in the class or in the online tutorials, um, I will use black cables for audio signals, I will use green cables for control voltages, and I will use red cables for triggers. But there are no control voltages involved in this, uh, in this demonstration. So, and then the output of the multiplier goes to the mixer input channel one. Now, in addition to this, I'm also going to connect the sine wave outputs 
to the mixing desk directly so that I can compare these signals with the ring modulated signal. So on channel 11, I have here the sine wave of one of 500 hertz. Let's listen to this. There it is. And on the other channel, on channel 12, I have 100 hertz. And on channel 1, I have the multiplication. And now we go to the devices again. Now if what I wrote on the board is correct, and I would increase the frequency of the second one, so if I would raise the 100 Hz frequency to a higher one, then the sum of the two frequencies should go up, and the difference of the two frequencies should go down. Let's see if that happens. It does happen indeed. I can hear one frequency go up, which is the sum of the two, and I can hear one frequency going down, which is the difference. Now, what happened now is that both frequencies are 500 Hz, which means that the sum is 1000 and the difference is zero. And if I would now increase the second one even further, I would theoretically get a negative frequency. But that of course doesn't exist. And this is why I wrote on the board that we will get the absolute value, because instead of minus 100 hertz, I will get 100 hertz when the second one is 600. So meaning that 500 hertz plus 600 is 1100, and 500 hertz minus 600 is minus 100, which is 100. So let's see if that happens. If I now bring up the second one further, I should start to hear two frequencies, which both are going up. Yeah, there it comes again. So 500 and 1000 is 1500 and 500 minus 1000 is minus 500 which we hear as 500. So this demonstration shows that what I uh, uh, wrote on the board is actually true. But you could ask yourself a question which is if I start with two sine wave frequencies and I get two sine wave frequencies out what is the purpose of this, you know? If I need 600 and 400 hertz and I have two sine wave frequencies here, why can't I just do 600 and 400 and I have what I want and I don't need the multiplier? This is of course completely true. But what makes the multiplier interesting is when one of these two is a signal with a certain amount of complexity and the other one is a sine wave. If you would take a sound from a musical instrument, uh, let's say a piano or a clarinet, you do not only have one frequency, which is the fundamental frequency, so that determines the pitch that you hear, but there are also harmonics. And from these harmonics, I will get a sum in a different frequency uh, with the uh, second uh, input on the multiplier. So let's see how that sounds. So for the demonstration, I'm going to use a couple of instrumental sounds, which are on a CD with sound samples uh, that we have here in the studio. Um, these sounds. A bassoon. and so on. And now I'm going to send the sound from the CD 
to the patch bay so that I can use it as an input for the ring modulator or AC multiplier. So I can do that by using a bus, I'm using bus number one. I'm opening it here. The output of bus number one is here, mixing desk outputs. And I connect that one to the first input of the AC multiplier. I'm taking the sine wave from the first sine wave oscillator. I connect it to the second input of the multiplier. And I bring the output of the multiplier to the desk. So you will hear the same bassoon sound again. But now, uh, after it has been ring modulated with a sine wave frequency of 500 hertz. Good sounds. So the sound changed completely. Now I'm going to replace the CD sounds, so the flute and the bassoon, with a voice. Uh, and you will hear that uh, ring modulation has a very strong and particular effect when it is applied to uh, the human voice. I'm playing at the moment my last composition called Cosmic Dances. It is produced here through eight loudspeakers in a circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in a circle. But finally, it is the result of 241 superimpositions of eight channel movements. Or, uh, what is also a very uh, effective sound to be uh, used with ring modulation is the sound of a piano. So that was it for today. Um, so far we have uh, four instruction films made in the studio. The first one was about the mixing desk. So if you are confused by things you saw in this video when it comes to the mixing desk, please check out the first video that is uh, uh, on this channel. Uh, and then uh, we had one about filters. We had one about tape recorders. And this one was about ring modulation. See you soon.